Jai Hind students, uh, welcome to this particular session. In the previous lecture, we have discussed four cases of image formation when an object is placed in front of a convex lens. We have discussed the case where the object is placed at infinity. Then we have discussed the case when the object is at a very very far away distance. Then when the object is placed at 2f. And then when the object is placed beyond 2f. Right? We have discussed all the four cases. And in all the four cases, the common point was the nature of the image obtained in each case was real. Right? So, let's consider the fifth case when the object is placed between f and 2f. Right? So, let's draw the ray diagram. So, as I told you, the lens is to be considered to be thin. So, while drawing the ray diagram, keep this in mind. So, this is the thin convex lens which is thick at the center and thin at the edges. This is the optical center and this is the reference point F. This is supposed 2F. This is F. This is 2F. Again, I must remind you students, it is very very crucial point. In order to draw perfect ray diagram, please ensure that this separation should be same. Make use of pencil and scale while drawing the ray diagrams, right? Please ensure these distances must be same. So, as for our objective, this is the case where the object is to be placed between f and 2f, like this. This is where the object is to be placed, a, b, right? This is the object, suppose, a, b. Let's make use of the rules. We have got three options, three rules are there. Let's make use of any two rules. So, what's the first rule? First rule is a ray parallel to the principal axis. This is a ray parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it will tend to pass through the focus like this. It will tend to pass through the focus. That's rule number one. Second rule is student, this is the optical center from where any ray passing will remain undeviated. So that's the second rule. So this is the ray which passes through the optical center and it will remain undeviated. So these two refractive rays meet at a point over here. So, if you drop a perpendicular to the principal axis, here the image will be obtained. And obviously, the top point will get inverted. So, this is A dash and the corresponding point of B would be B dash. Now, look students, it's pretty clear that the image obtained is inverted. The image obtained is of much larger size than that of the object. Also, the image is obtained on the other side as that of the object. So, if you place a screen over here, there the enlarged image can be obtained on that particular screen, isn't it? So, what will be the nature of the image then? It will be real and inverted. It will be real and inverted. What's the second point? Image is formed beyond 2f. Image is formed beyond 2f. What's the third point? Image is magnified, that is H2 is greater than H1. Again, I must tell you, H2 is the notation used to denote the size of the image. H1 is the symbol used to denote the size of the object. So here obviously enlarged image is obtained. So H2 by H1 would be greater than 1. And the ratio of these two will give us linear magnification. So more of linear magnification is greater than 1. So enlarged image is obtained. Enlarged image is obtained. So these are the characteristics associated with the image when the object is kept between f and 2f. So this is case 5. Let's discuss case 6. The object students, it is gradually moved closer towards the lens. right? So now the object is assumed to be placed at the focus at f. Let's see. In this case, what will be the nature of the image? This is the optical center, this is the principal axis, this is f, this will be 2f, again, this, these all are equidistant. So, this is f, this is 2f. We are dealing with the case of a biconvex lens, where the radii of curvature, the focal length are equal of both the surfaces. So, this is the reference line from where the deviation light is uh, considered. So, this is the position where the object is placed, A. Now look, 
again, we will make use of the same rule. A ray parallel to the principal axis, that is parallel to the principal axis. After refraction, it will pass through the focus like this. I repeat, incident ray which is parallel to the principal axis, after refraction in the case of convex lens, passes through the focus. That's rule number one. What about the other rule? Incident ray passing through the optical center, it will remain undeviated. It will remain undeviated. So, it will be like this. So you can notice a set of parallel beam will be obtained. These are the parallel rays. So parallel rays they never meet. So they will meet at infinity. So what I mean to say is that it is the position of the object when the image is formed at infinity. So what's the nature of the image? Again, it must be formed on the other side and highly enlarged image. So it is real and Inverted. Second, where the image is formed, these two rays will meet at infinity. So, image is formed at infinity. Image is formed at infinity. Right? Third, third point. Image is highly magnified. Image is highly magnified. What I mean to say is that H2 is very very large than H1. Therefore, linear magnification will be very very large as compared to 1. So, linear magnification would be very very large as compared to 1 because H2 is very very large as compared to H1. The size of the image which is formed over here, the size of the image is very very large as compared to the size of the object. So that is the reason why linear magnification is very very large as compared to 1. So clear students? So we have discussed 6 cases and in all these 6 cases the common point is the nature of the image obtained is real. There is one very important case left and that is when the object is placed between the optical center and the focus. It is an exceptional case students. It is in this case that the nature of the image will get changed. It won't be real. It will be virtual and erect. So that is case 7. So that we will discuss now. So let's start with case 7. Case 7 is when the object is placed in front of a convex lens between its optical center and the focus. Between its Okay students, now uh, case 7. Case 7 is when the object is placed between the optical center and the focus in front of a convex lens. Let's see. This is a convex lens. It is considered to be thin. This is the optical center. This one will be the principal axis. This is F, this is 2F, this is F and this is 2F. Right? So now what do we do is, as per the case, we will consider the object to be placed between the optical center and the focus, somewhere over here. This is the object, suppose this is A and this is B. And this is the reference line from where the deviation of light is considered, is assumed, right? So let's make use of the rules. Ray parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, it will tend to pass through the focus. It will tend to pass through the focus, like this. It will tend to pass through the focus. And what about the second rule, students? Ray of light passing through the optical center of the lens will remain undeviated. It will remain undeviated, right? So, this is the optical center. So, the ray which passes through the optical center will remain undeviated, like this. And students, please don't forget to indicate these arrows. And dark lines, they represent the real lines. Now look, if we extend these two lines, they will never be able to meet each other. And actually, the gap between them keeps on increasing. So, on extending it further, they will never be able to meet. So, what we do is, we will produce these two rays in the backward direction. Right? And since in the backward direction, it has to be represented by dotted lines. Like this. So, let's represent it 
by dotted lines. So produce these rays in the backward direction. So what we get is, we will get a point of intersection. It will appear as if these two rays are coming from a point somewhere over here. So this is where the image will be obtained. This is A dash and this is B dash. Right? So students you can see, in this case, the image is formed on the same side as that of the object. The image in this case is formed on the same side as that of the object. So the nature of the image is virtual or it is imaginary. It can't be obtained on the screen, isn't it? It can't be obtained on the screen. So accordingly, this is the case when the object is placed between the optical center and the focus that the nature of the image obtained would be virtual. For all the other cases, the nature of the image obtained is always real. This is the only exceptional case. This is the only case where the nature of the image obtained is virtual. Right? So, this is it. One more very very important and basic points. Whenever the two dark lines intersect, then it will represent the formation of real image. It is valid for both mirrors as well as for lenses. And if two dotted lines intersect, Dotted lines means virtual lines, imagined lines intersect, then it will give rise to virtual or imaginary image. Right? Please note down this basic basic things. Right? While drawing ray diagram, if you remember these basic points, you will be able to draw the ray diagram perfectly without any sort of ambiguity or without any sort of dilemma. Right? So what I have stated is, if two dark lines intersect after refraction, then at the point of intersection, it will be the case of it will be the position of real image and in case of two dotted lines intersecting at a point that will give you the position of virtual image two dotted lines intersecting at this point it will give us the position of virtual image so students this piece is very very important so what about the nature of the image then it is virtual and erect second it is formed it is formed on the same side formed on the same side as that of the object as of the object that is the reason why it is virtual and third look it's pretty evident from the diagram h2 is greater than h1 h2 is the size of the image h1 is the size of the object this is h2 and this is h1 so h2 is greater than h1 which implies that h2 by h1 is greater than 1 and students, the ratio of the size of the image to the size of the object is known as linear magnification. So linear magnification is greater than 1. Right? So again I repeat, in the case of convex lens, this is the only position of the object when the nature of the image obtained is virtual and erect. For rest of the other positions, when it is placed beyond F, the nature of the image obtained is real and inverse. So students, for the convex lens, we have discussed all the seven cases, right? Now let's discuss the image formation in the case of concave lens. Let us discuss the image formation in the case of concave lens. So there, in the case of concave lens or diverging lens, the nature of the image will be always virtual, erect, and the size of the image obtained will be always found to be less than that of the size of the object. So size of the image will be always diminished. So let's check it out. So we are dealing with image formation in case of concave lens. In case of concave lens. Here as I have stated, in concave lens it is found that the nature of the image obtained is always virtual erect and diminished size of the image is always less than the size of the object it is always formed between the optical center of the focus and being virtual means it is always formed on the same side as that of the object right so there are not uh, many cases over here so we can discuss the nature formation of the image only in three cases right so let's discuss them so what to do is in order to understand completely 
this is our concave lens, this is the optical center. You need to draw three ray diagrams. We will try to study one by one. So we will consider the case when the object is brought closer to the concave lens. So what will be the change in the position of the image obtained, that we will discuss. So this is the reference line, isn't it? This is the reference line. This is the optical center. This point is the optical center. And this is the principal axis. This is the principal axis. Right? This is suppose the principal axis. Let us consider this to be the focus. Same, this to be the focus. Draw all the diagrams exactly identical. So then only you can conclude from the ray diagram. A certain conclusion will be obtained from observing these ray diagrams. So please ensure to draw three identical ray diagrams. Here it will be 2F. This is 2F. And this is 2F. Right? Its focus is virtual. So what to do is student. Here we will place an object very close. Suppose over here. Very very close to the concave lens. Let's see what will happen. Very close to the concave lens. Like this. Suppose we place an object over here. Here. Very close to the concave lens. So as per the rule, a ray parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, it will appear to be coming from the focus. So it will be like this. It will appear to be coming from the focus. Right? Rule number one. In the case of convex lens, ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through the focus. And in the case of concave lens, ray which is parallel to the principal axis after refraction appears to be coming from the focus. This is the focus. This is the virtual focus of the concave lens. Right? What about the second rule? A ray passing through the optical center, it will remain undeviated. It will remain undeviated. So, this is where the intersection of the rays are taking place. So here the image will be formed. So this is A dash and this is B dash. So look students, image is formed between optical center and the focus and the size of the image is small. Right? So image is formed on the same side as that of the object and it is diminished in size. It is virtual, erect. So two rules I have used. One is Ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction will appear to be coming from this focus, and the second is ray passing through the optical center will remain undeviated. So, the intersection of this dotted and dark lines will give you the position of the image over here. This is A dash, B dash. Clear, students? Okay. Second is, if I take the object farther away from the lens, suppose here is the object. Please ensure to draw the same size, right? We are dealing with the same object. So this is A. Now let's check it out. Where the image is formed. Again, as per rule, ray parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, it will appear to be coming from the focus. It will appear to be coming from the focus. And second is, ray passing through the optical center will remain undated. So look students, here the point of intersection is taking place. This is the point of intersection. So here drop up perpendicular. So this will be A dash, this will be B dash. Are you observing some very basic thing? As the object is taken farther away from the concave lens, the size of the image keeps on decreasing and the position of the image keeps shifting towards the focus. Again I repeat, as the object is taken farther away from the concave lens, here the object is placed very close to the concave lens, here the object is placed farther away from the concave lens, right? So as the object is taken farther away from the concave lens, what is noticed is, the size of the image will keep on decreasing. And the position of the image, earlier the image was formed somewhere over here. Now the position of the image tends to shift towards the focus. And observe the size of the image. Earlier the size of the image and now the size of the image is smaller. Right? In both the 
three cases, nature of the image will remain same. It will be virtual, erect, diminished. But there will be a difference in the change uh, in, in the position of the image as well as in the size of the image. So, if the object is placed at infinity, if the object is placed at infinity, infinity means like this, parallel beam will be obtained, like this. These are the rays which are coming from infinity. Object placed at infinity. So what will happen is, it will appear as if the rays are coming from the focus. So if you join these points, if you tend to join these points, it will appear as if these rays are coming from a point on the principal axis and that point is the principal focus. So students, it is advisable and preferable for you to make use of ruler and scale. Avoid any free hand diagram. Avoid any sort of free hand diagram. It's like this. So indicate by dotted lines. Indicate by dotted lines. Okay. So here the point size image will be formed. So students just try to conclude after observing these three ray diagrams. Right? The conclusion is as the object is taken farther and farther away from the concave lens, the position of the image keeps shifting towards the focus and the size of the image also keeps on decreasing and eventually and ultimately when the object is at infinity then point size image is formed exactly at the focus. So this is the conclusion which we can draw from these three ray diagrams. Right? So I'll write the conclusion. First is nature of the image is virtual and erect. Second, image is formed, image is formed between optical center and the focus, between optical center and focus. Third, in all the cases, Size of the image is less than the size of the object, that is h2 by h1 is less than 1 or linear magnification is less than 1, that is image is diminished in size. Image is diminished. Fourth point, again I am concluding, fourth point is, fourth point is, as the object is taken farther away from the concave lens. The position of the image shifts towards the focus and the size of the image also keeps on decreasing and eventually and ultimately when the object is at infinity then point size image is obtained exactly at the focus. Right? So, these are the points which you need to remember in case of the image formation when an object is placed in front of a concave lens. As friends do remember, here whenever a ray is parallel to the principal axis, after refraction it appears to be coming from the focus. So that is the reason why a concave lens is also known as a diverging lens. Right? So we have discussed the image formation both in case of concave lens as well as in case of convex lens. So, let us recapitulate. In the case of convex lens, the nature of the image is always real and inverted except in one case that is when the object is placed between optical center and the focus. While in the case of concave lens, the nature of the image obtained is always virtual erect and the size is always smaller than the size of the object. That is the image is always diminished, right? So, these are the three cases for concave lens. So, students, I hope you have understood this topic completely. In the next session, we will discuss uh, lens formula. A lens formula is a mathematical relationship between U, V and F. 
right? And then we'll also try to obtain an expression for the linear magnification in terms of the object distance and the image distance. And students, I must remind you, if you like the way I teach and if you like my videos, then please don't forget to share the link with your colleagues so that uh, everyone gets benefited from my lecture. And uh, if possible, do try to hit the like button. Right? Thank you.